Max the shop to try to see if he could make a deal to drive one of the old Yellers and, and, and Elkhart Lake and, and uh, Laguna Seca and whatever. And I got to know Carol at that point. And, you know, we'd go to lunch or whatever, and he was talking about the things he wanted to do. He wanted to build his own sports car. The Cobra thing had not come together yet. And he wanted to start a driver's school. That was another thing. So, I mean, to make a long story short, I ended up uh, uh, running his driver's school for him. And that was ideal for me because I could spend every day out at Riverside Raceway on the racetrack, uh, either testing the Cobra program, which came a little bit later, or uh, working with students out there. And the big advantage was that uh, uh, during this period of time, Ken Miles came to work for Carroll Shelby. And uh, we did a lot of the development on the, uh, the Cobra out at Riverside Raceway. So I got to sit alongside Ken Miles driving, you know, hundreds of laps around Riverside Raceway. We were developing the car. And he would sort of talk out of the side of his mouth and tell me what he was doing, what subtle changes, uh, how he was getting around the track. And that was incredibly instructional for me, you know. <laughs> but it was good. I can't remember sitting beside anybody, anybody, you know, <laughs> sitting beside anybody be, get, you get your attention, but that's your, I mean, the, but you not being capable of just the uh, driving instructor. You started doing a lot of design work. Obviously, you designed a lot of the logos. He started designing bits and pieces for the Cobra for the very first uh, Shelby Cobras. And then obviously you, you ended up with, of course, the Shelby Cobra coup. Well, it was interesting because I never told Carol that uh, I worked as a designer. I, my whole goal was to be a, a driver for him. But when the <laughs> op opportunity came up to uh, start designing some of the things for the company, he had no uh, sort of promotional idea about creating an image for the, for the company. And so uh, a lot of my early time when I was not on track, I spent things like, you know, designing the, the emblem for the Cobras or the logo for Shelby or his advertising. And, and uh, so we worked on, wrote a lot of the ads, photographed it, and worked with a friend of mine named George Bartello, who was a great automotive illustrator. And we did a whole series of ads on the Cobras, which are now classic ads. So. It was really fun being able to use the, uh, the design background that I had to sort of build the image for Carroll. And then after we were successful with the Roadster and winning the United States Road Racing Championship in 1963, he had this desire to go back to, uh, to Europe uh, with the car, but we knew the car was gonna be absolutely worthless over in Europe because uh, in the United States tracks, which were all about two and a half miles around, we seldom got over 140, 150 miles an hour for all the circuits, you know, if you go to Bones or you go to Spa or Le Mans, everybody's running 180 plus. So there was no way the, uh, the Roadster was going to be uh, competitive at all, all there. But uh, because of my interest in, in, in the racing and whatever, I was very carefully scrutinizing the rules. And I uh, came to Carol and I said, you know, uh, Ferrari tried to cheat the FIA and homologating the Ferrari GTO at one time. And uh, they changed the rules because of that. And uh, you can now make a special body provided you have a homologated chassis. And he didn't understand the whole thing because it was kind of complicated. First of all, the rules are all in French and whatever. But uh, I got a translation of it and I explained it. Uh, the Appendix J rules, if you had 100 cars built and you were homologated, if you wanted to, you could now change the body on the car. And I said, you know, we can build a new body on the Cobra Roadster and uh, be competitive. And I said, I've got some uh, technical aerodynamic work that was done in the 30s in Germany. And I think I can apply that uh, to the car. Now, this sounded so far out to Carol. He says, look, if anybody had any technology that developed in the 30s and nobody's used it, it's not going to be of any value. And I said, well, that's, uh, I, I think that they knew what they were doing and nobody took advantage of it. So I think we have an opportunity to do that. And uh, it was very interesting because uh, there was a division in the shop. Carol had already learned that Ford Motor Company was going to uh, build the GT40 with uh, buying the design from Eric Broadway, which was the, the old Mark 6. So uh, his chief engineer was a 
really brilliant guy, probably the top uh, race car builder in the world at that time, had built the scarabs for lab, spread that low, and come over to work for uh, for Carroll. And he said, look, this idea that Pete's got of, you know, doing a new body on the coupe is you know, really pretty worthless. Ford Motor Company's got millions of dollars that have gone working with uh, Eric Broadway, and we're gonna build this uh, Mark VI into the uh, GT40. So we'd be wasting our time on it. And uh, so that was sort of Carol's main uh, advice on engineering. And then on the other side, here comes Ken Miles, and Ken Miles comes up and says, you know, Pete's got a great idea. We can build this car in a matter of, you know, months and uh, have it out on the track long before Ford ever gets the GT40 built. And I think that uh, he's got an idea to build it. So there was a real division in the shop on what we should do, whether we should do the car or not do the car. And, and uh, so Carol was not very technically uh, astute. So he, he, he's listening. He's got great respect for Ken Miles on one side, and he's got great respect for Phil Remington on the other. So he calls in another guy who was a very famous aerodynamist named Benny Howard. Now, Howard built racing planes in the 1930s, and he won the Thompson Trophy air races and everything out, out here, and, and had become a top aerodynamic consultant in the industry. And he was a Texan and a friend of Carroll's, so Carroll brings in Benny Howard and uh, wants me to, to explain to Howard what we're doing with this car. It's about, oh, I'd say 70% complete. That's this time. guy here. Yeah, the detail the, 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 the designs for this guy here, right? right. So yeah, this is a Daytona. And uh, so uh, Howard comes in and, and Carol says, well, I want you to explain to, to uh, Mr. Howard here why you think this particular strange looking car is gonna be uh, successful. So I started telling him about the, the German aerodynamics stuff that was going on. That was Dr. And, Cam, yeah, right? And of course, you know, Benny never heard, nobody ever heard of Reinhard Koenig von Faschenfeld or Von Volkham in the United States really at that time. There was no internet or anything. So you had to be a, a real historian to understand what had gone. And of course, Miles knew this because he'd been over in, in England and seen the Germans race in, in it when he was a kid in there and had a great respect for all the German engineers. So uh, I explained the whole idea of what Kahn had said about the flat back on the roof you know, on the chopped off tail and everything. And he's just shaking his head. He says, you know, he said, you know, you think that's gonna be really slick or whatever, but he said, if we did that on an airplane, it, it wouldn't work, our airplanes wouldn't fly, so it's, you know, I don't think it's really gonna work at all. And um, so they went off to lunch and, and Carol came back after that and said, uh, you know, he says, this, this thing's not gonna work. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, he builds great airplanes and they fly great, but I'm trying to stay on the ground and go fast. And you gotta trust me. And he just looked at me for about 10 seconds, you know, and he says, well, you better be right. And he just turned and walked <laughs> off. <you know? laughs> so it, it you told me right to get you got the car built. Yeah. And rather, it was, uh, it was always a, a problem with the company. Well, because you... You tweaked all this when you went to Le Mans in what, 1963, and, and the Cobra was doing like 150 down the straight, right. and the GTOs yep. were doing about 180. 180, exactly. And then, of course, when you went back in 64 with this car, right. uh, you were doing what, 197 down the straight? Yeah, 97. So what did, what did the famed yeah. aerodynamics say to that? Yeah. So that, uh, well, the first car, the first time we took it out to Riverside, yeah, you gotta understand, when we were building the first Daytona Coupe, at Sylvia America in Venice. Uh, again, the shop was divided. There was a, a little group of you know, Ken Miles and myself and a young kid from uh, New Zealand and uh, John Olson, who was really responsible to became the crew chief on that car and uh, built that first car. So we were kind of the, uh, the little foreign group over in a little corner building this car and everybody was going, oh, gosh, gosh, oh boy, but this thing's really dumb, you know, they're wasting all their time on it. And uh, so even when we, when we took it out the first time, nobody really in the crew really went out there. They, were, they knew it was gonna be a failure. They weren't gonna you know, take any time to go out there. So there was just a very few of us went out to, to the track. And of course, Ken got in the car for their first time. And he, he didn't even take a lot of laps on it. I mean, he made three or four warm-up laps, 
got on it, came back in and said, what gear have we got in this car? We said, you know, Ken, we built it identical to your competition roadster, same gearing, same setup on it. And he says, nah, he says, there's a lower gear on this. I'm getting too many revs on this. He went out again. And by then we start clocking the car and we were three and a half seconds a lap faster than we'd ever been with the Cobras. And that was a new lap record for that type of, of a car out there. And he came in, he went right up to the phone and called Shelby and said, look, uh, I don't have exact time because I don't have my dream wheel on here, but at the, at the speed we're turning with these gears and it, it's correct, we're going to be 180 miles an hour. We're competitive with the, with the Ferraris right now. So with no change other than just the body, uh, we went from 160 mile an hour to 180 at Riverside. 